In this exercise, we will see how to resolve our circuit and how to find the current which flows across the resistance R by applying the Kirchhoff's laws. So, we are interested in a DC steady state. It's an electrical state where all the current and voltages in our circuits do not vary. And we uh, we seek to determine this current by applying the Kirchhoff's laws. There are two Kirchhoff laws, the current law and the voltage law. And when we resolve the circuit by applying these laws, the resolution is very algorithmic. There are six steps to follow. So, at the first step, for each branch of our circuit, it is necessary to arbitrary choice the direction of the current. It's really arbitrary. And if after doing the calculations we will see that the currents will be negative, this means that the actual physical current flows in the opposite direction. So we will start with this tab. At each branch we will assign the direction of the orbit uh, arbitrary current. And we will start from the branch which contains the voltage source E1. And here we will use the generated convention. Indeed, the voltage arrow is already predefined by manufacturer, so E1. And in generated convention, the current arrows much must follow the voltage arrows. So I will choose the current arrow in this branch going to the node A and I will name this current E1. So we have applied the generated convention for this branch. However, it should be noted that in reality in physics we are pretty free with conventions and it's only a convention and we can apply even the receiver convention to our generator it means the current arrow could oppose the voltage arrow, could go against. It means we could, we could choose the direction of this current E1, go against the voltage arrow E1. But in this case, in this case, after performing the calculations, we will find the current to be negative in the generator one E1 branch. So, uh, starting from the beginner, it's better to apply the generator conventions to the all the generator and receiver convention to all the receivers. So, in this branch, we have assigned the current direction, the current arrow, E1. We will do the same for another branch, which contains the generator E2. And I will also apply the convention of the generator for the generator E2 and I will choose the current arrow E I2 going to node A. So current I2 and generator voltage with voltage arrow E2 have the same directions. And in the third branch I have already the, the, the direction of the current predefined by the statement, so I will not change it, it's already predefined. It's a first step. So, so um, it was the first step. At the second step, for each dipole, we will specify the voltage arrows. And all the resistor we will treat in receiver convention. It means the voltage arrow go against the current arrows. So, if in this branch we have an arrow going to the node B, it means the voltage arrow on this resistor we will put in the opposite direction going to the node A. And we will call this voltage arrow UR. The same we will do for the uh, another resistors R1 and R2. So the current arrow is going to node A 
it means the voltage arrow on this resistor R1 should go to the node B opposed in the opposite direction and I will call this voltage U R1 the same for this resistor R2 so the, the voltage arrow in the opposite direction U R2 and all the voltage sources for, all, for these voltage sources, the, the voltage arrows are already predefined by the manufacturer. So we will not change them. And as I said in the previous step, it's better to apply the generator convention for all the generator. Well, the third step. At the third step, for each closed loop, we will choose the orbitary bypass direction. It means that, for example, for this closed loop, I will use the orbitary bypass direction in this uh, direction. And, for example, for this closed loop, I will choose the direction in, this, uh, in the opposite uh, side. And when I will apply, after that, the voltage law, I will consider all the voltage arrows which follow this orbitary bypass direction, which I will consider as positive. So all these voltage uh, arrows which will follow this direction will be positive, and all the voltage arrow which will oppose the bypass direction will be considered as negative. So it's a third step. At the fourth step, uh, we will apply the current low. So we will choose the nodes and we will apply the current low. The current low states that the algebraic sum of the input's currents to the node is equal to the algebraic sum of the output current to the node. Just a little reminder, a node is a junction point of at least three branches. So in this circuit we have two nodes, the node A and the node B. And I will write the node, uh, the current low for the node A. For, so for the node A, as input currents, we have the current I1 and I2. So I1 plus I2 equals to the output current, which is big R. Now, if we will consider the node B, it will be the same thing, uh, except as input current, we will have I, and the sum, as a sum of the output currents, we will have I1 plus I2. So the equation will be exactly the same. At the fifth step, we will apply the voltage loops. For the closed loops, uh, the algebraic sum of the voltages across the successive branches is nil. And we will start with a closed loop number one. I will name number one and number two. So, for the closed loop number one, uh, as I said, we will consider the voltage arrows which follow the bypass direction as positive. So, E1 follows the bypass direction, so E1 positive. UR1 opposes to the bypass direction, it's an opposes, opposite side, so UR1 is negative. We will continue to turn and we will see that UR is also opposes to the bypass direction, so it's negative, minus UR, and the sum of all these voltage arrows equals to zero. At the next step, for all the resistors, I will apply the Ohm's laws, which state that the voltage at the resistor at ohmic conductor is equal to the product of the resistance of this ohmic conductor 
multiplied by the current which flows through this conductor. So, as U R1, we have a product R1 and I1. R1, I1. And as U R, we have a product R and the current which flows through this resistor, which is R, I. R, I equals zero. So it's a first equation, it's a second equation. Now I will do the same thing. I will apply the voltage law to the closed loop number two here, which we have defined the bypass direction in the opposite side. So in this direction, E2 is positive. It follows the bypass direction. So E2 is positive. UR2 is negative. UR2 opposes to the bypass direction. Minus UR2. We continue to turn and we see that UR also opposes by the to the bypass direction. So we have minus UR equals zero. It's a voltage law. So next step, we will apply the Ohm's laws to the both resistor R2 and R. So for the resistor R2, we have as a voltage the product of the R2 and I2. R2, I2 minus and for the voltage R, we have already defined it. It's a product of R and the current which flows through this resistor, which is big I. R, I equals zero. So it's the third equation. So we have a system of three equations. I will rewrite them. So I equals I1 plus I2, E1 minus R1, I1, minus R, I equals zero, and E2 minus R2, I2, minus R, I equals zero. So it's a system of linear equation. And uh, we must ensure that the number of equation is weak, equal or even greater than the number of variables. And what we don't know in this uh, system of equations, we don't know I, we don't know I1, and we don't know I3. So we have three variables and three linear equations. So we can start to resolve the, the system of the equations. We need to find the current big R. So from the first equation, I will express the current I1, which equals to I minus E2. And I will inject this new equation in the second equation. And yes, in the second equation. E1 minus R1, I minus E2 minus R, I equals zero. And I will rewrite the third equation. So E2 minus R2, I2 minus R, I equals zero. So we have reduced the, sigma, the, the system of our equations into the Cisco system of two equations. Initially, we had three equations. So uh, I will develop here uh, the product, we will have E1 minus R1I plus R1E2 minus RI equals zero. And in the third equation, we have E2 minus R2E2 minus product RI equals zero. So I need to find the current big I. So what I will do, I will multiply the first equation 
by R2 and I will multiply the third equation by R1 and after that I will, I will calculate the sum of these equations. So I will calculate the sum. So I will multiply firstly by R2. E1 R2 minus R1 R2 I plus R1 R2 E2 minus R I R2 I will continue with the sum plus and the third equation I will multiply by R1 E2 R1 minus R2 R1 I2 minus R, R1, I equals 0. And now we can see that the terms with I2 will disappear. We have the same, the same uh, product but with the opposite side. And in the equation now we have the one vari variable which is the current R. So I will rewrite this equation E one R two plus E two R one and I will take these three terms and I will factor in by R. So we have R minus a one a two minus r a two minus r r one equals zero. So I will put this term to the opposite side and I will have I a one a two plus r a two plus r r one equals E one R two plus E two R one. So finally, we have found the current which flows through this resistor E, which equals E one R two plus E two R one divided by R one R two plus R R2 plus R R1.